Hi, this is Jet, Juliet Ferguson with Sotheby's International Realty. I think this is blog number 11, and we have James Schlittler here from Critter Getters. Correct. And I'm looking forward to learning more. I, I know you helped several of my clients and my own mother even to get rid of raccoons nice. in Pacific Grove. Nice. So, um, what exactly do you do at Critter Getter? Yeah, we, we provide a service that was, when it was created, it was an unmet um, service that nobody did. Mm -hmm. We do a pest control, We own, I own and operate a pest control business that specializes in urban wildlife. Okay. Uh, raccoons, possums, skunks. Those are our specialty. Mm -hmm. To kind of further that specialty is if these critters are residing on your property. Okay. Uh, in the crawl space below your home, right. up inside of your attic, uh, underneath a shed. What happens is when there's a lure that's that's attracting these critters, you get um, you get fallout activities, you get confrontations between these critters oh. and, and homeowners much right. more frequently sure. because they're coming and going. So what we do is we try to uh, deny lures on a property. Usually, I get called in when shelter is being provided. If they're on residing, purpose by the homeowner or no, just under the house. Um, homeowners contact me when critters are residing okay. in their homes. Yeah, um, uninvited. Uh, yeah, there's there's not a lot of companies that do it. There's a couple of others out there, but they approach it a little differently. Okay. We like to focus on exclusion. Okay. Getting these critters out so that they cannot come and go freely. Um, seal it up so that they. I I messed that up. Um, if you can edit this, do it. Um, we really can't. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we we basically get them out and then secure and seal the structure sure. so that they can't oh, come right. and go freely. We don't that seal them the in order. the house. Correct. We get them out and then seal it so they can't return. Correct. Now what I this does it. is it does two things. One, it takes care of the current occupants, the current sure. critters that are living inside of your home. Right. And secondly, you will have the formidable barriers in place so that future critters that inevitably will come onto a property, poking around, looking for a source of shelter, realize there's nothing there, and move on. Okay, so it's not easy to make it secure, from what I'm hearing. There are different times of the year when that task becomes much tougher. Okay. Yeah, spring of the year is always the busiest Mama time. Mama having the babies? They are no longer motivated by learned behavior, they're motivated by instinct. Right. And to intervene with their instinctual uh, motivations uh, is a bit tougher. They're gonna find safety for the baby. Yeah, uh, that's exactly it. It's okay. to defend their baby. So, uh, getting them out, locking them out, they're free to go and do whatever they care to. Okay. Uh, so what you do is you get them out and you don't let them go back. So they by move up along the to somewhere else. And move on. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, other other companies that focus in this realm of work, they generally go after the critter. And that's, okay. that's what most people think of, is if you have a critter coming onto your property causing problems, uh, go after them, trap them, remove them. Unfortunately, remove them. They, by, by law, they need to be euthanized. But If you um, trap and remove them, exactly. You're legally not, you have to euthanize them if you move them. Correct, you cannot transport and release them. And, okay, yeah. gotcha. So when, when that approach is taken, and they've taken care of the current population that was attracted to somebody's property. Sure. It's just a matter of time before others come and fill up. Right, because it's a good point. house to go in. And on a business level, that's the best thing to do. You'll get this cyclical income, residual income from trapping one group of critters oh. one season, and then another group will come in from and don't their, make money I off see. of that. So they're making good money because they're moving them, yeah, and exactly. then they so have, But you actually the best thing to do, do is, is to try to be as comprehensive as possible. Take away the lures. Okay. That's attracting them. Take away the access to shelter. Shelter sure. is a very strong lure. Food is always the number one. Okay. If you leave pet food out, you are asking for problems. There are some people that and there's do nothing ask that for I can problems, do. and yeah. I try to educate them on yeah. that. There's nothing that I can do to keep critters off your property if you if continue you to them. put out uh, <laughs> pet, pet food. Yeah. Right. So uh, trying to be as comprehensive, avoid uh, repeat business. Okay. Um, try to be as comprehensive enough to take care of the problem, eliminate the desire for critters to spend time on your property, mm -hmm. and that will last you what can Very you do? Long. Obviously, you mm -hmm. secure under the house or wherever mm -hmm. they've been going, mm -hmm. or the attic, right? Mm -hmm. You secure yep. the house. Yep. Then what else can you do besides not feeding them? Well, keeping food out of their reach. Okay. Food is always the number one lure. Um, 
folks around these parts are very familiar with raccoons raiding trash cans. Trash cans right. can be a very good supply of food source. Um, a lot of the people that I run into have bungee cords, and that seems to be kind of a standard. It's my so, parents have chairs that they lay heavy chairs on top of their garbage heavy, yeah, cans. Yeah, heavy, heavy weighted objects, just something to disallow them to gain access to the food source that is in the trash. Okay. Um, or any food source. If you have uh, fish, fish ponds can be quite a lure. Oh. Um, if you have newly laid sod. Um, it can be now that enters a whole nother realm. Oh wow! Because oh, wow. that can create problems that are very difficult, if not impossible, to keep from happening. Okay. Um, Less of that right now. Digging for grubs and worms. Right, right. <laughs> digging for grubs and worms. Those are more natural food sources that are available on your property. Perhaps um, uh, treating for grubs and worms. Try to reduce that 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 kind of deal. Yeah. Um, it's not something that we offer, but um, uh, just keeping lures unavailable. That's, okay. that's always the best. So when did um, you start Critter Gutters? We started the business back in 1992. My okay. father had uh, retired from the Army oh. uh, after, after uh, uh, 21 years. He was the maintenance worker at an apartment complex in Pacific Grove. Okay. And two or three buildings on the property, he would basically clean up repair uh, units as people moved out and new, and new people came in. Um, one of the buildings, uh, residents were complaining of activity inside of their their home okay between the floors the attics oh boy. and he called around he called everybody SPCA animal control various pest controllers nobody did anything about it okay so he kind of thought about it and he managed to hmm, he, he sealed up the bottom he saw how they were getting and he sealed it up and took a lawn chair back about 50 feet just as the Sun was going down and watched all these critters come out and then went and sealed it up no more complaints Wow so he went back to his daily job, and uh, the managers that he worked for very close with them. They were okay. ranting and raving to their friends and family. Hey, Ronnie got a bunch of raccoons out of our building. And, and it said, was well, a pretty big well, problem around and here. And they said, well, we've got that same problem. Right. So I, I think he went over there for like 100 bucks, basically did the same thing, sealed it up, watched these critters come out once they were all out, put a final barrier in place, and that took care of it. Okay. And one thing led to another, and the rest is history. We wow. built a full-on business based on it. Um, very, very um, lethargic kind of, very simpleton kind of approach that we had taken when we first started. Yeah. A lot of failures. Sure. You, as long as you learn from those failures, Absolutely. that's it. Um, so now we've kind of streamlined things. It's almost an art form. Okay. Reading, interpreting these critters, it's always different from one job to the next. And that's, it's that's, raccoons, that's probably... possums, and skunks. skunks. Those are our real special things. Yeah. Mm, my dog got stung. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It usually is uh, dogs that, that actually get that. Cats yeah. tend to be a little more standoffish, but. Maybe smart. Too. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but again, trying to, to offer customers a comprehensive approach. What is to, your phone number? The phone number you can reach us, uh, the business number is area code 831 831 375 375 5684. 5684. So this is James Schlitler mm -hmm. of the Critter Getters in Monterey County. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Jed. I appreciate it.